Welcome back to Untaming Masculinity, the podcast where we tackle issues relevant to men and their journeys to reclaim their masculinity. I'm Dan, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend Brad. What's going on today, man? Not much, man. Saturday, just enjoying time with the family. Things are good over here, man. Whole family had COVID last week, so well, this week rather. So it's been kind of a it's been kind of a funky week. What about you? Everyone feeling okay though? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's good. Back to normal. Good. Uh you know, just staying busy. I uh, I got off for a big, big mountain bike ride this morning. A little bigger than I was expecting, but it was uh, it was a good time. It was nice to get out and kind of get a bunch of miles in. And I think uh, this afternoon we are having the in laws over. I'm gonna make some steaks and some clams and do a little surf and turf. So. Oh man, that sounds be, pretty good. Be a good weekend. So today. We were tossing around ideas for a topic, and the idea of getting back on track came up. It was actually something that you offered up. So I'm actually going to toss it over to you and kind of let you let you get us rolling here. As I'd said earlier, my my family had COVID, and as everybody knows, protocols when you get COVID is isolation. You know, five days from the day of first symptoms, stay at home, lock yourself up, essentially. Um, so my wife got sick last Tuesday. It took me a few days to get to kind of follow suit, but I got sick on Saturday. So because of that, I had to stay home with her, tried to isolate as best I could. I sequestered in my basement for a week and then I got sick. So that counter, so to speak, reset. So I spent the majority of nine days at my house and for me, I'm not somebody who likes being holed up. I felt like I started to get cabin fever. I was getting a little crazy. I was getting antsy. You know, I was able to go out in my yard and you know, sit in a hammock and mow my lawn and do some different things. But the fact of the matter is I wasn't able to actually get out there and leave. I wasn't able to go do things. I wasn't able to go to the gym. I wasn't able to just kind of engage and do some of the things that I enjoy doing, like getting out in the wilderness. So because of all those things, I realized that as the days went by, I was getting more and more frustrated and I felt like I was falling more and more into a rut. I know I talked to you and reached out to you a few times about it. I reached out to some other folks and I just, I hated it. I got up and I felt like crap. I spent the whole day feeling like crap and all the goals and ambitions and things that I'm working on became so much harder to execute on because my headspace was just this malaise of blah, for lack of a better word. So in, in other words, I, I fell into a rut. And I think that that's kind of a microcosm of what so many guys get into. And that's why this is a pretty powerful topic is it's really easy to fall off the wagon. It's really easy to lose track. You start a diet, you start a workout regimen, you start reading every day or praying every day or whatever that looks like. And in the in your objective to build a habit or build a routine, Somebody throws a wrench in the spokes, everything goes to shit, and you find yourself looking up saying, man, remember that workout plan I started three weeks ago? I haven't done it in two weeks. And that's something that I think most men battle with constantly. I'm sure everyone listening can can relate to that. I definitely can relate to that. I'm going through a similar issue in terms of just mental headspace and questioning a lot of a lot of situations in life nothing you know earth shattering but but enough that it's just kind of making me not want to be productive right i don't, I don't want to put effort I, i'm feeling the the effects of not wanting to put effort into things not wanting to work hard and and do those kind of things and it's just frustrating to to get to that point and i'm trying like you said to to kind of get back on track and figure out how do i get out of this rut how do i get back on track and how do i start becoming more productive more more the guy that I want to be. So the question becomes, what happens? How do how do men fall off the wagon? Like, how do we lose our way? I know that that's not an easy question to answer, but it's definitely worth some discussion. So what do you, what do you think? Absolutely. I think there's, there's multiple ways. Obviously, there's outside factors, something like what you went through where you get sick, somebody else in the family gets sick, something happens within the family that just deters you. You know, we've got friends who've gone through all kinds of stuff between moves and job changes and family issues, divorces, all that stuff. All of that can can mentally throw you off your your routine and off your out of, you know into a rut. And then I think burnout is another big one. You know, for yeah. me that that is probably what's causing this is a little bit of burnout. 
it's a little bit of I'm in that that season of life where I just kind of have to put my head down and get stuff done. And then there will be I'm hesitating using the word rewards later, but there will be benefits to my work later. You're, you're right. That's something that so many men struggle with. And the fact of the matter is we fall into ruts because most of the things that we do that are moving the needle for us forward for us tend to require some sort of intentionality, some sort of focus. You know, a lot of us like to talk about, we talk all the time about going to the gym, working out. That requires intentionality. That requires you to get out of bed, get your stuff, get, get to the gym, put forth that effort. And when the situation or circumstance arise, arises to where that, that convenient routine that you've built for yourself becomes more difficult or not possible, you could find a substitute, but most men don't. They, they choose to choose the easier path. They choose to sleep in. They choose to eat an extra donut or whatever that looks like. And once you do that once, you allow yourself, you tell yourself that's okay, it becomes that much easier to do it again. So in this life, it's really easy for us to choose the easy path. That route is, it seems more appealing when things seem to be going awry, when things are not as they should be, when your life is out of order, for whatever reason, it, it seems that much more appealing to choose the easy way. You know, I sat here saying I couldn't go to the gym for a week. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I didn't like being stuck in my basement, but I've got kettlebells down here. I've got some other things I could have done, but did I do them? No. And I think that that helped perpetuate some of that negative headspace because when times get hard, oftentimes we just simply throw in the towel. And when other opportunities to pivot present themselves, we don't want to do them for this reason, that reason, or the other. So I tend to think that while there are things like burnout that are completely different, when it comes to circumstances that have we have some modicum of control in, we tend to just make excuses. It's the natural man. We've heard numerous people use that term in the past, but... It's it, the natural man wants a path of least resistance. And that's what we fight against on a daily basis. He's lazy. He's weak. He's lazy. He's weak. He's looking for the, the path of least resistance. That's the only way you can really say it. But the issue becomes when you're working hard and you're in that, that lull, you know, when you're in that period where you need to keep your head down, you need to keep moving forward and you're not seeing the the micro gains that you're making. Part of that's because you're just, you're in it. So if I'm, if I'm working on something, I may not see the micro gains. Whereas if you're removed from the situation, you're checking in every month, week, whatever, you can see progress that I'm making, but because I'm in it, I can't see it. The other is the plan that we have may not be granular enough to completely allow us to see our progress on a on a, a scale down time scale, meaning that I may have a great plan to get, I, I, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but get a job promotion, let's say. That's the end goal. But there's a lot of steps I have to hit along the way. But if I'm not identifying those and celebrating is not the right word, but but at least recognizing that I've achieved a next level and a, a level after that and a level after that, it allows us or it creates a, a mindset where we, we just get the fuckets. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? What does all this work really mean? I'm not achieving anything right now. Well, you are, but you're just not seeing it at the moment. That is something that that hits really, really hard. I've, I've talked to length about some of the struggles with, with my marriage, and pretty much every single one of them is self-inflicted. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to say I'm perfect at what I do, that I took this horrible marriage and I shouldn't call it horrible, but a marriage that was not heading down a good path and that I immediately was able to fix it. No, it required a lot of work and intentionality and a lot of hard days without any sense of idea of progress. Because in order to rebuild trust with my wife, I needed to do the work and prove to her that I could do the work. And that's still an ongoing battle. And there are days where it's hard. When I look at things, I'm like, I don't see the progress. I don't see how I've grown. I don't see how things have become better. And that's what so many men struggle with is it's so easy to throw in the towel if you can't see that. Oftentimes, if we don't have that outside influence that's telling us that we're doing well or that things are progressing, we want to throw in the towel. Now, obviously, I have chosen to not throw in the towel when it comes to my marriage. I'm working really, really hard at it. But there are so many times when I look at it and say, 
Am I making the progress that I need to make? Am I moving the dirt that I need to move? Are things getting where they need to be so that I can treat my wife the way that she needs to be treated and so that I can be the husband that I need to be? Mm -hmm. And everything negative in this world, you can call it Satan, you can call it whatever the hell you want to, wants to tell you that you can't do it. Like that that inner voice inside of ourselves, that, that bitch voice, as Andy Frisella says, wants to tell us that we're failures. So that when we look at things like that, where it doesn't feel like we're making significant progress, if we don't naturally, tangibly notice it. All of those things are conspiring to tell us that we are failures and that we cannot do it. And that's probably a large reason why so many men just kind of fall off the wagon. It's all these things are conspiring to tell you no, that you're not doing it, that you're a failure, that you're not making progress. When all it takes is an outside perspective to help you know that, yeah, you are. So I'm going to... I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit with something. We talked about this a little bit 10 episodes ago, maybe about your rotator cuff injury Mm -hmm. and the rut that you were in when you were going through that, because you had the injury, you sustained it. It was really discouraging. You had to pretty much start at ground zero. And as you talked about previously, you know, recovering from rotator cuff surgery, the physical therapy, that is no joke. It takes a long time. It's very discouraging. And obviously, I don't want to steal kind of your experience, but I remember being the outsider as you were going through that and struggling with it. And oftentimes, we needed to sit there and tell you, yeah, man, you're making the progress that you need to make, even though you couldn't see it in the moment because it was such a prolonged thing. And it was very discouraging. So for me, the rotator cuff surgery or surgeries was, it was two very different experiences. The the first, people are going to laugh when they hear this, but the first was almost an adventure for me because, Psycho. yeah, but it's, it was, all right, I'm hurt. I didn't know what I was in for in recovery. My doctor, I don't want to say lied, but may have uh, told me that the recovery was shorter than it really ended up being, like by a significant amount. And I went into it with just full of, you know, piss and vinegar ready to, ready to slay the world. And had a great PT. He was able to walk me through the times where I, I fell backwards um, and, and had, you know, uh, regressed in my recovery. But we, we got to the end. The second one was, was much worse because I went into that knowing full well all the pain, all the hard work, all the, the suffering, all the disappointment that I was in for the next four to six months. And Sometimes it's it it not sometimes it was definitely a case of ignorance is bliss the first time around. I just went in going, all right, I'm used to going to the gym on a regular basis and working out. This is my workout now. This PT is is how I get better. The second time I went in and going, oh crap, I got all this band work and all this these dumbbells and all this stupid stretching and and all this stuff that just I don't want to do. I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to go through this six months again. And it was complete, it was a total head game comparatively. And I definitely got into a rut on the second one in terms of just looking at it and going, I've already put in this work once. I don't want to do this work again, just to get back to that same place. If I was putting in all this work and I was getting to a better place, you know, further on down the, down the path, great. But I'm just getting back to square one. And this is just miserable. But you do the work. You got it. Sometimes you just gotta gotta suck it up and and realize that this is who we are. This is what we do. We need to make these decisions and move forward. There's a healthy dose of honesty that we all need to have when we're sitting in one of these funks, one of these depressive, difficult states. And when we're honest with ourselves, we can actually evaluate and say, okay, what's the outcome if I do the work and if I get through this? What a lot of guys don't think about and actually spend time truly dwelling on is what's the outcome if I don't. So many men just lazily mail it in when it comes to not doing the work when they get into a rut. Like for me, I've struggled in full can in full transparency with with eating my whole life. I've been an emotional eater. My my relationship with food has been bad most of my life. Growing up, my dad would tell me I was fat. He, you know, even into my 20s and my 30s, he would tell me how overweight I was, how much better I would look if I would lose weight. And as a child, when I heard that messaging, that led me to emotionally hide binge eating. And that's still something that I struggle with to this day. 
And I've worked really hard at getting in shape, getting myself to be physically capable, who somebody who puts good food into my body, but there are still times where it's late at night, I get stressed, I get frustrated. What's the first thing I do? I binge eat. You know, that 2,500 calorie day I had all of a sudden turns into 5,500 calories of crackers or cookies or some bull crap. And that's a very cyclical thing. It can get very easy to just binge eat and just not do well, right? Mm-hmm. It's mindless. I think that that's where I'm trying to go with all of this is that it's a mindless thing. Oh, I'm frustrated. I'm just going to eat. How often do men, when they're in these mindless ruts, take a step back and say, if I keep doing this, what the hell is going to happen? I was in a period where I ate like crap for probably a month straight pretty recently. I had to wake up and tell myself, all right, what am I doing? I've put on 15 pounds in like the last six weeks. This is not sustainable. What's going to happen if I continue to do this? I was somebody that when I got married, I was about 275. And at my lightest, I got down just under 200. 200 is a little light for me, but I like to stay around 205, 210. And I said, if I don't start taking care of this now and putting something into action now, I am not going to like, I'm going to get back to 240 or 250. And is that what I want? Is that what I want for my kids? Is that what I want for myself? Is that what, what I want for my wife? The answer to that question is obviously no. But how much hurt and how much damage could be prevented if we simply stopped and were self-aware and honest enough with ourselves when we're down in the dumps? Say, what's the worst that can happen if I don't change this immediately? So first, there's nothing wrong with 240 or 250. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm shorter than you, man. Come on. Yeah, I know. I know. I just like busting your chops on that. The, the thing that, that really hit home when you were, you were talking there was we allow one tough spot to screw us up everywhere. So you got a problem with your marriage, you got a problem at work, you got a problem with your kids, you got a problem with the neighbor, the, the, the truck just exploded and you need a new transmission. Whatever it is your problem is, you don't need to eat a ton of food just to make yourself feel better, but we allow ourselves to do that because it makes us, like, like I just said, it makes us feel better. It gives us comfort somewhere else to compensate for the discomfort that we're feeling in other areas of life. It's that dopamine hit, right? We right. our minds are wired for it. I'm actually just like you with the with the, with the food. The um, when I get frustrated, I go, I get the total, the total. I don't give a craps, and I, it's starting to have pizza and cheeseburgers and nachos and all the good stuff that I love. And next thing you know, I'm I'm two sixty, two sixty five, and I'm going, damn, I can't do anything right now. I feel you there, but it's definitely us allowing ourselves to be comforted in one area of life because we're being squeezed in another area of life. Yeah, you've nailed it. That's it's so interesting because I'm I'm actually sitting here looking through atomic habits and we we allow ourselves there's something that we've been conditioned like there's some traumatic event or there's some event at some point in our lives usually in our childhood where we associated soothing pain with with some quick dopamine hit whether that's jacking off or watching porn or binge eating or smoking or drinking or whatever that looks like because of that dopamine hit that we want to receive and what's so interesting about it is going back to atomic habits when he talks about dopamine it's essentially this feedback loop because what's so interesting about it is our minds are wired in such a way that we we anticipate a reward that quick, that quick hit, right? Like, oh man, I'm stressed. I'm pissed off. I need that quick fix right now. I'm going to watch porn. Invariably, all these things, porn, drugs, binge eating, all of it. Yeah, it might feel good for a split second, but what comes after that? Right. You feel like shit. And what's so, what's so curious about the mind is when we get into these ruts, we're constantly seeking that dopamine hit. I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. And af- after all of these immediate dopamine hits, that feeling of emptiness and that feeling of sorrow and that void that there, that follows thereafter, that just builds and builds and builds upon itself. And that's why it can be such a destructive path for men. It's, oh man, I feel like shit. I'm going to drink. Oh man, I, drinking felt good for a second, but oh, I feel real stupid for drinking. My wife's going to be pissed. How might I cope with that? I'm going to drink some more. <laughs> It's a horrible feedback loop and, it, and it's, it can send men spiraling. And that's, that's the challenge is how can we ensure ourselves? 
how can we insulate ourselves from that sort of behavior when everything around us feels bad? Like when you feel bad, you want to do something to give you that quick, immediate fix. So I guess the question becomes, and I'm going to kick it over to you for this. When we're in those funks, how do we, how do we first of all, recognize that fully and then make the steps necessary to start pushing through and doing the hard things to make progress again? The first step in recognizing that is when you decide to make decisions that you normally wouldn't. When you decide to go look at porn, binge drink, eat the, the foods that you normally wouldn't eat, whatever it is. When those activities start to become almost the norm instead of, instead of the things that you're, you're avoiding, that's a sign that something's wrong. It's something, you know, you need to take a deeper look. I know with me that that's the sign. As soon as I feel, as soon as I start picking fights at home, eating like crap, drinking more, all those things, they add up to something's wrong in life. And I need to, to take a step back and figure out what it was or what it is. That's the first step. I think the second step is then doing doing a deep dive by yourself and just really kind of taking a look at your life. You can use a, an AAR type mentality with it, but taking a look at where am I at, taking a look at your stressors, figuring out what's causing me to to make these decisions and at least identifying the problem. I'm not I'm not gonna we're not gonna get into how to fix the problem necessarily right yet, but identifying the problem and then what I found personally works best is explaining it to other people. I talked earlier in the in the conversation about this kind of mental rut that I'm in right now. Simply by express writing down my feelings and expressing them to some of my battle team members, my wife, you, a couple of other guys. I don't have the, the solution. I don't necessarily even have the cause, but I at least say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm feeling. This is this is what's going on with me. First of all, you're putting people in your corner and you're not alienating them because if you don't let them know what's going on, they're going to immediately think somehow or another it's their fault. We all we all fall into that mentality of, oh, well, Brad turned into an ass, so I must have done something wrong. Well, not necessarily. It could be something you know completely different. It could be something at work with you and you're just manifesting it with, in, our, in, in a relationship. The act of, of letting people know allows them to at a minimum support you and at a maximum help you or assist you fix the problem. So I would say those are two first steps that guys need to take to at least uh, not even halt the progress, but, it, but at least kind of stop gap any further damage that that may be occurring. I honestly don't have any other real suggestions to build on top of those. Those are an incredible, tremendous place to start. And I'm glad that you went there with both of them. Like that AAR, there's a lot of self-realization involved in that. It's being completely honest with yourself saying, okay, here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm going to do moving forward. That's something that is intensely personal, but at the same time, it's something that you also want to be comfortable enough sharing with others, which really portends into the second point. And that's the key. Honestly, we need to be telling other people what we're going through. Most men that fall into ruts, fall into difficult times. They try to go it alone. They don't reach out to their friends. They don't reach out to their band of brothers. They don't reach out to their wife or their significant other. They simply just try to push forward and go at it alone. That doesn't work. We need other men. We need, going back to our episode on Band of Brothers, we need a Band of Brothers. If you don't have somebody in your life you can't confide in, that is a tremendous problem and it's doing yourself a tremendous disservice. Absolutely. I mean, listen, I've I've been the model of the... The, the masculine guy who feels like he can take the weight of the world on his shoulders and just, you know, my problems are my problems. I'm not going to burden you with it. But I've found, especially with this latest situation that I'm in right now, that simply by conversing with people, it's not taking the problem away. It's not even allowed me to necessarily get to the root cause, but it's allowed me to, one, have a team of people who are, are in my corner. And they know what's going on. They know why I might be acting differently than I usually do. And they also know that there, there's something, there's something not right here. You know, it, it allows them to help. It allows them to to just be present. I mean, you yourself. How many times have you checked in with me in the last week just to say, "Hey, how's it going? What's going on? Any any motion here? Any updates? Any way to I can help? Or or have you made any headway in what's going on? I haven't. And no, there's, there's nothing you can do right now, but 
the, your presence alone has made the situation better. And it has allowed me to at least feel like I'm not carrying the burden alone. And as dumb as that might sound, getting that weight off your shoulders and dispersed amongst your crew is such a relief because you know that it's not just you in a bubble that has to fight this this problem by yourself. You've got a team that will help you however they can. And you can now concentrate on, okay, what's causing it and what are the next steps in, in eliminating it? Absolutely. That's, that's paramount. That's what it's all about is you need to be able to have somebody shoulder that load with you. And to that point, I think one of the things that we, we don't often do is we don't choose to act. We allow it to perpetuate. We allow it to keep going on longer than it should. You, you did a good job of, you know, saying, Hey, I'm in a funk. I'm not doing, I'm not doing well right now. Like you didn't have to get into details. Like that's, you you weren't spilling your soul, telling your life story to me about what you were going through. You just simply said, Hey, I'm feeling this way right now. And having that trust and that confidence in others to express that is huge. But the fact of the matter is you did it. You acted and you acted immediately. Yeah. It's been going on for a while, but as soon as you started recognizing something was off, you reached out and that's what it's all about. It's not allowing that to perpetuate. It's not allowing that to linger. It's not allowing that to fester because that festering is only going to cause damage and hurt. Have don't, we can't emphasize this enough. We talk about it all the time. We'll probably continue to talk about it all the time. You can't go at any of these things alone. You cannot action requires intentionality but that action and that intentionality also require an honest admission that we as men are not wired to do anything alone. We just aren't. I, I want to make this very clear too. Listen, guys, we are human. We have emotions. It is okay to tell people that you have emotions, that you are sad, that you are scared, that you don't feel well, that all these things. It's not an excuse for you to hide behind, but for Christ's sake, we're... We're humans. You have emotions. You are not this stalwart figure who is just capable of, of being the fortress and, and not having anything bother it. You're, you're a man. We're built on emotion. Recognize that you have them. Recognize that there are going to be phases in life where you don't feel right. And tell people. Your family and your friends, they want to help you. We are not designed to live by ourselves in our own worlds and not communicate about who we are and what's going on in our lives. Yeah. And I'll readily admit that there are some hardships that guys go through. Sometimes we're dealing with clinical depression, you know, suicidal thoughts. Those things are very serious. So I want to be perfectly clear that there are times where medical intervention may be necessary, but that doesn't take away from the fact that if you're feeling a certain way, or if you're really down in the dumps, you need to rely and trust those around you. It's, it's okay. And just as, just as Dan said, yeah, emotions are a weird topic. They're a strange conversation for men. We all have them though. They're all a critical integral part of our lives. We feel them every single day, multiple times a day, countless times a day. So we have to recognize them, accept them. And by God, for, for all that is holy, we cannot run away from them. Yeah. You feel sad. It doesn't mean you're less manly. It doesn't mean you're less masculine. It just means you're sad. There's nothing wrong with that. Just it's not a weakness. It. Yeah, it's not a weakness. It's it's part of being a human. It's going to happen. And like I said before, it doesn't mean that it, we're giving you permission to hide behind them and and to stop moving forward and stop being you know working towards things that are successful in your life. But understand that you're going to hit these roadblocks, and you've got a team that is willing to help you when you hit these 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 emotional barriers. Something that I I do a lot when I talk to guys who you know, join the Iron Council, you know, the group that we are in, mm-hmm. is I will tell them one of the keys to your success in building a band of brothers and joining a group like this is learning to lean in. Mm-hmm. And I will tell them and share with them that I've become very I don't want to say overzealous, but I've been I've been pretty assertive and my determination to lean in when things are hard because I've realized I need it. 
And I want to empower other men to think that same thing that, oh, if Brad can do that when he's going through, through a hard thing. I'm going to go through, I'm going to do that exact same thing because that changes. That makes a tremendous difference. There was a guy I was talking to. He is on, you know, my battle team within the, the Iron Council and he was going through a really hard time and nobody heard from him for weeks. Been two or three weeks where anybody had heard anything from him. He ghosted us. So I sent him a text. It's like, all right, we got to talk. And eventually he calls me up and I talked to him and he said, I see what Dan is going through and I see what Sean is going through and I see what John is going through. These are different guys on the team. And I feel like what I'm going through doesn't compare. It pales in comparison to what they have going on. They're going through some very heavy things. I'm not compared to them. So because of that, I didn't feel that I had anything to vow. Like I didn't have any room to talk. But it's not a contest. I called them out on that. Exactly. Yeah. It's like You've got to be kidding me. That is not the way to live. What you're going through is intensely and crucially important to you. And we're here to help you out through those things. And when he told me what they were, they were actually fairly significant things that he was going through. And he simply felt ashamed because he felt that his problems were trivial in comparison to somebody else's. So I kindly called bullshit on that. It's... Yeah, like I said, it is not a competition, right? And I'm not going to sit here on my high horse either and say that I haven't fallen into that trap. I actually, it took me a good amount of time to come to you guys with what I'm going through right now because we've got friends going through divorces. We've got friends going through job losses. We've got friends going through all kinds of crazy health situations, stuff like that, where I just... I don't feel good. I don't feel like mentally, like I don't feel, I feel melancholy, like suck it up buttercup. I mean, that's, that's the mentality that we as men are, are ingrained in. And that's, it is not right. Like, you know, there, there's a time and a place for that, right? There's a time and a place for bearing down, working through the hard situation, but that doesn't also mean that you can't communicate to other people what you're going through. Yeah. You're doing yourself a tremendous disservice if you simply, Keep it to yourself. If you keep your mouth shut, yeah. if you allow yourself to continue down a path, that's not healthy. Yeah. There are some small, there are some smaller side effects. You know, if you don't go to the gym for a couple of weeks. Yeah. That, that sucks. But if you allow, allow that to perpetuate and fester that two weeks of not going to the gym becomes two months, becomes six months. And all of a sudden you're looking down and you're 60, 70 pounds heavier. Yeah. You look at oh, a marriage yeah. where, you live in dishonesty, so you choose to just continue to lie yep. and lie and lie. Where does that put you? You look up we, one day, you're divorced. We've kind of hit this, hit this hard, but anything that's causing you to undertake self-destructive actions, and I use that term loosely in terms of self-destructive, but it can be overeating, it can be porn, it can be uh, alcohol, womanizing, whatever it is, that's important to you, which means it's important to, to the people in your life. So let them know. As trivial as whatever the cause may be, or you may not even know what the cause is, that's fine. But let them know something's going on. And I'm just, I'm going to keep hammering that one because it's its so important. And from personal experience, I can tell you that the more you let people know, the better it's going to be for you and for them and for your relationships. Because you're going to find a solution. You're going to disperse the load. And, and you're going to take somebody else's load later on. So don't feel guilty about, about throwing something on somebody at this point. But yeah. it's, it's important to have those conversations. I just, I can't, I can't beat that home enough. Yeah. It's, it's vital. There's no, there's no way around that. It's absolutely vital. And to your point, you mentioned this earlier, when you're going through hard things and you don't express that and you don't invite others in, you're not well with yourself. You know, going to a phrase that Kip Sorensen uses a lot, he likes to talk about living in and out of integrity. If you can't tell somebody else what you're going through, you're going to live out of integrity because you're not comfortable with where you're at. What does that generally result in? People who are holding things in, who are going through a hard time, tend to lash out. They tend to be angrier. They tend to be more moody because we're not meant as men to hold these things in and sit on them. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not well when we do that. And that can be very destructive in and of itself. Yep. The people who are there ready to help you can't help you if you're lashing out at them because you're holding something in and withholding right. that from them. you're withholding an opportunity for them to serve you. How incredibly selfish. Yeah, I, I don't think I can say that any better. 
it's very selfish and it's very it, it'll have negative consequences for for you and for them it's a really strong conversation and it goes hand in hand as well with the episode that we just did about having difficult conversations right these the, the getting back on track and, and and getting out of your funks and out of your ruts will require some of those those heavy conversations so i encourage you guys to you know, to go listen to that, that podcast as well. Um, Brad, as always, man, I, I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you digging into these issues with me. It's, it's not always easy, but it's good to know that I've got a friend like you in, in, in my corner. Likewise, buddy. And, uh, you know, for all the guys out there, if you guys need to get in touch with us, please do. We're, we're open to, you know, and, and, and want to reach out to you guys. So you can reach us on social media. Uh, we're, most active on Instagram right now, but you can find out all our social media on the website as well as the show notes for this, where we'll, we'll throw in a couple of links for a couple of the resources that we mentioned. And, you know, that's all found on untamingmasculinity.com. The other, the other thing that we ask as always is for you to go to your podcast player of choice, leave us a five-star rating and review that will obviously allow us to get in front of more men and help them through these difficult situations. So Thanks again for listening. We appreciate all you guys, all you guys being here and 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 hearing us out and working through these tough situations with us. And until next week, we'll leave you with just one question. What are you doing to untame your masculinity?